George Jackson and the Soledad brothers and Angela Davis. I was a real, you know, then I would have probably come with a gun. Joined little Jonathan Jackson in Marin County with Angela Davis with my gun. I would have done it then, you know. So ironically, here I am, 40 years later, going to the same prisons, but this time I'm wearing Buddha's robes. You know, it's very funny. I remember Arturo's friend, Francisco, he's out now, when I went to visit him, he was really nervous about meeting a nun, you know. So I came and we just had a friendly talk and it was a very nice talk and chatted away and he's become a Buddhist. And he wrote later, he said, oh, Rabina, I was so glad to know you have a wild side. <laughs> no, I was behaving very nicely, but he, kind of must, he, must have, he could tell, you know. <laughs> so the thing is, um, our friends in prison, you know, who are the ones, because I mean, thousands of people write, but not everybody continues to write, that's cool. You know, lots of people come to a Christian church and might stay, you're looking for something. So many people who do find it in Buddhism and then they start to practice and they write to their correspondence teacher or they, or they receive teachings in prison, you know, many, we work with people in prison who are teachers as well. And people who work in prisons, like my friend here, Keith. Um, the, the ones who really look, are working with Buddhism and using Buddhist tools in their life, they understand this point super well because they've got the anger, the depression, the, the jealousy and the low self-esteem and they've got the grosser suffering. But they all see, and this is the real skill, and this is if you look at Tibetan people's experiences, especially now again in the news, you know, this is why the Tibetans are these happy people. They have suffering lives. People harm them and, and all the rest. Look at the stuff that's going on in that country. But because of their practice, and this is what Buddhist practice is essentially about, knowing your own mind really well and quite simply learning to change it, learning to go beyond anger, jealousy, depression and all the rest that we think is so concrete. But the Buddha would say they're just, it's like cognitive therapy. Buddhism is sort of like cognitive therapy. I'm really not kidding you, you know. You, it's not easy. It's long-term work. But knowing your mind well and learning to change the way you see things. And that's the real skill. The miracle is to be able to know, sure, I'm stuck in this now, but hey, it doesn't define me. I can change. And of course, with people in prison, because it is so intense, they, they, you know, their suffering is in their face. And because they know that they're not writing to us to help them find a key to get open their prison cell, they're using all these cliches is to find the inner liberation. I'm not kidding, you know. It's a, it's a serious thing. It's a real thing. It's not, and the Buddhist approach especially too is not just hit and miss, you cross your fingers and cross your eyes or your legs and whatever and hope for the best, you know. It really is hard, solid, day by day, working on your mind. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs>